In the previous video, we did a semi-discretization using the finite difference method. In this video, we're going to do a semi-discretization using the finite element method. Again, it's going to be a semi-discretization, which means that we're only going to discretize the space domain and we're going to leave the time domain alone. So let's consider our omega to be included in Rd, that will be our space domain, d being the number of the dimension of the space, uh, and that will be a polyhedron. And we will consider the variational formulation that is here. So you see, u will depend on a time t and a space variable x. But v will only depend on the space variable. It will only be in h10 in space. It does not have a time component. So really, it goes back to what we said earlier. We're separating the variables here. And what we're doing is simply considering t as a parameter uh, in our variational formulation. And what we are stating here is this variational formulation, which is going to be d over dt of the integral of utx vx. And again, it's the integral only over the space domain omega plus alpha. Uh, and then we integrate del utx with, uh, in our product with del vx. Okay, and that's integrated over omega which is equal to the right hand side uh, to the integral of f over omega. And that depends on t, uh, but we're only doing the integral with respect to x. So, so in the end, once we integrate over the space domain, well, obviously that uh, I mean, x no longer comes into play. We have integrated with respect to x, and we're just left with something that depends on time. And that is the variational formulation we have. And you can see why you can go back from here to the partial differential equation that uh, is of interest. Now, what we're going to do is consider a mesh of our space omega, or the, the, the space uh, that we consider. We will have some uh, interval vertices. Uh, we'll have a certain number of triangles. Uh, and S will be basically the number of vertices we'll have. Okay, and what we'll do is use a P1 finite element method, and we'll have a basis phi j, and obviously phi j, j will go from 1 to n s, and s being the parameter we just defined. Now, what we will do is to look for a solution, which means, again, the finite element method, you project your solution onto that uh, space with the basis, and you look at the coefficients. Up to now, in, in chapter 5, uh, the coefficients were just number, real numbers. Now, what they're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to consider this, this, rather than considering numbers, we're going to take functions that depend on t, that depend on the time variable, right? So the, the parameters, the, the, the components, the, 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 coef the coefficients, uh, the coefficients in front of phi j will be uj of t. Now, if I plug this in, my variational formulation, here is what I get. Uh, so I do exactly as I did before when I did the finite uh, difference, uh, the, the, the finite element method, right? When I did the finite element method in chapter 5, uh, once I have decomposed my solution onto the basis, then I put this back into the equation, and here's what I get. So you see there is an additional term that we did not have before. The additional term is this term, sum from j equal 1 to n s, of u prime j of t and the integral over omega of phi j phi i. This is a new term we did not have with the elliptic PDEs. But the rest of it we did have. Uh, we, we had the sum for j equals 1 to n s of u j, not u j t, multiplied by the integral over omega of del uh, phi j uh, in our product del of phi i, and of course equals to the right hand side. And we also have something that we didn't have before, that is the initial condition that appears here. In chapter 5, we wanted to rewrite this in a matrix form. 
So we consider the matrix of the integrals of del phi j del phi i, and that was called the rigidity or stiffness matrix, and that was simply defined as for, for each component of the matrix as the integral of the gradient of phi j in our product gradient of phi i, uh, where again phi j and phi i are just the component of the basis, or just the, the, the element uh, j and i of the basis uh, that I considered. So that was a matrix that we had defined in chapter 5. But you could see, you can see that here we have an additional integral, which is the integral of phi i phi j. So we're going to define another matrix that we'll call M, and that we'll call the mass matrix, and that will be uh, basically the, 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 well, the component ij of this matrix will be the integral of uh, over omega phi j phi i, and it's called the mass matrix. Uh, as I said in chapter 5, uh, rigidity or stiffness matrix and mass matrix uh, will we'll just um, don't have much to do with uh, stiffness or rigidity and mass. I mean, it, it is the case in some mechanical engineering problems, and this is why these matrices get these names uh, that uh, are even used if, you, if the problem has nothing to do with mechanics. Uh, but but that, that's just the name they have, and for historical reasons, because the whole thing came from structural mechanics, this is why this matrix A is called rigidity matrix, and why this matrix M is called the mass matrix. But in any case, what I'm saying is now that by writing UH as U1 to UNST, obviously UH is going to be depending on T, and FH as this integral, which also uh, is going to depend on, on T, then the equation that we had can be written uh, this way, right? And so you can see that you can just write uh, that, uh, you know, I mean, you can replace uj prime of T by u prime H, and most importantly, this integral of phi j phi i over omega will simply be the ij component of the matrix M. Of course, I define M so I could write this, so it's, there is no surprise here. And same thing uh, uh, for, the, for the second term, uh, which we did before, uh, you have the, 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 the rigidity matrix A that comes into play. So, so here's what you get, so let me just write this here, uh, which means, uh, let me actually just, 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 just you know, you know, permutate this, this two, these two terms twice, uh, and so what it means is that I can write this in uh, uh, like this, basically as a product of matrices and a vector, so I do the product of mh with uh prime, and the product of ah and uh, and this is, and then I'm taking the ith line, and this is true for every single line, Right in between one and s. So, so basically, what, what what I'm writing is that this uh, can be written in in a matrix form, and here is uh, the matrix product M H U H prime plus alpha A H U H equals F H. All right. So this is what I have, and let me actually just emphasize that U H and of course U H prime both depend on time t. So that's what we have. With uh of 0, which is given, uh, and, and that therefore is an initial value problem. And as before, like before meaning in the previous video, we're going to have global solutions. But again, we are not done yet. At this point, we have a discretization of space. We have some kind of an IVP, um, initial value problem, but we still need to approximate our solution. So, either, I mean, we, we can do the finite difference method, that's what we did in the, previous video, in, the in the previous video. We can do the finite element method, this is what we did in this video. In both cases, we are uh, reaching the point where we have an ODE, or if you prefer, an initial value problem uh, that we have to deal with. And this is what we're going to do in the next video.